and go. Good morning, welcome to Fossil Creek Tree Farm and Nursery. I'm Max, I'll be the uh, garden guide for today. Uh, we're gonna be going over um, mixed containers. So we've got a ton of plants and we've also got North Texas weather, which is kind of blowing in cold. So if you have a problem uh, hearing me, just let us know. I'll try to do better. Uh, but uh, we've got uh, tons of stuff. Now that we're into April, uh, we've got uh, not only spring things, but we've got a bunch of things that will tolerate the heat of the summer. And, uh, you know, the, uh, with all the plants we have, uh, you're limited by your imagination. Uh, and uh, if you don't feel uh, imaginative, if you uh, come down and uh, look at the plants, I think they will inspire you. Uh, they do me, I've been around them forever. And you think maybe I could be jaded? No, uh, I get excited every time, every year this time. Our freezing temperatures are gone, so we can garden with abandon. So we'll be going over, you may have heard the expression, uh, thriller, filler, spiller. Uh, that's kind of categorizing the plants that you could put in a mixed pot. Uh, some of them are obviously uh, in one category. Some of them are kind of in between. They spill a little bit, but they're really snazzy looking. But uh, if there are rules, uh, we can go ahead and break them. Uh, it, uh, the bottom line is, if you like it, it's right. Uh, first off, we'll go over uh, a bunch of the spillers that we have, and these are typically going to be toward the sides of the pot and uh, go over the edge trail down. And of course, the, uh, some of the, over the last 20 or so years, the quintessential spillers, uh, potato vine. Of course, this one's probably the most popular, the chartreuse uh, color, uh, marguerite. We also have the tricolor that's uh, got a kind of a lavender, white, and a light green. And of course, there must be two dozen varieties of these things now. Also have the uh, burgundy variety. popular ones, uh, verbenas of different colors, extremely heat tolerant, uh, bloom from now until probably Thanksgiving. Uh, can't get too hot for them. Uh, low water use. These guys you don't want to keep soggy. And a bunch of neat colors. Uh, peach is a real popular one. Looks neat with blue and uh, red. Uh, the uh, spillers don't have to be extremely vigorous. They can be some relatively compact plants. You know, this is a sedum called lemon ball. And you can see it's already trailing over the edge. It's not going to crowd out its neighbors like potato vine uh, might try to do. Uh, and of course, if you put potato vine in there and it does try to crowd somebody out, you know, there's a cure for that. But uh, uh, lemon ball, uh, the sedums are evergreen. They'll do full sun all the way to light shade, low water use. And, and of course, there are different colors the uh, red, uh, the gray, this one's called uh, blue spruce. Uh, neat variation. We're just now beginning to get in uh, periwinkles, which uh, the ones that there are uprights and trailing types. The trailing types, typically on the sign, you will say cascade. That means they'll get about six inches tall and uh, 20 to 24 inches wide. Uh, commonly used for hanging baskets. They'll go way down the side of a pot. Uh, can't get, it cannot get too hot for them or too sunny. 
the original plants hail from Madagascar, so uh, they're adapted to uh, heat and full sun. Uh, a neat plant to plant with those uh, is uh, Blue Days. It's just beginning to bloom. It's a really neat color of blue. Uh, I planted some of these in a raised bed together with the periwinkles, and uh, I guess that's been a couple years ago, and I thought the periwinkles were uh, kind of going to embarrass the Blue Days. Uh, they did not. Uh, Blue Days held its own. It was equal to or better than the periwinkle, so I was quite impressed. Uh, they'll go all through the summer, well into the fall. Uh, really neat color. Since the uh, uh, periwinkles come in a bunch of different uh, pinks, peach, uh, uh, purple, so uh, this blue really is a neat companion. Here's another kind of uh, petite trailer, the Creeping Jenny. Uh, this one's an uh, evergreen perennial. It'll take a pretty fair amount of sun or uh, shade is fine. Uh, like the potato vine, it likes water. So, uh, But it's a, a neat look and it'll trail quite a ways down the side of a pot. You know, one of the things that you can uh, do with it too is if you're planting other things uh, in the pot, you don't have to put these right at the edge or only on the edge since wherever they uh, grow, the stems will root along the ground as they grow. So when you put them in a pot, you can do some of the stems growing into the pot and they'll grow under the other things and out the other side. So uh, a neat plant. doing shade uh, English ivy is good you know these are uh, variegated which is a neat thing for shade since they're uh, you know a light foliage but uh, they will do the same thing as the uh, creeping Jenny they'll uh, root into the ground as they go across the pot so you can see like one like that you could plant it in there and this one plant would go out all sides of the pot and trail over the edge Uh, this one is the uh, Dichondra and this one's uh, called Silver Falls and uh, this one is the uh, if there was a Hall of Fame for uh, uh, spillers uh, this would be it uh, if you put this in a hanging basket and put it eight feet above the ground this guy's gonna reach the ground so they don't know whoa all they know is go but uh, a really neat color and uh, also uh, very heat tolerant, uh, relatively low water use, so a tough plant. You may see some of these little green ones like this in your yard. Here it's a weed. In California, uh, they use it for a turf. But here, it's either a weed in your yard or it's a neat plant like this. Of course, here's a uh, trailer, the Terenia which this guy came out, you know, must be 20 or 25 years ago, this variety, uh, Summer Wave. They also have a, uh, a new one that's uh, got a little bit darker bloom on it, but uh, it will do uh, light shade to uh, a pretty fair amount of sun, uh, and it is very heat tolerant, unlike the, the Terenius that it came from that typically kind of gave up when uh, July showed up. This one will uh, keep going. Uh, in fact, we have some hanging baskets of this one right now. But a neat color. I'm a, I'm a sucker for blue. Of course, uh, a neat plant for a mixed pot. Uh, the, uh, uh, this one is the Euphorbia uh, Diamond Snow. And it's kind of between a, a filler and a spiller. It'll make a big poof of the little uh, light white you know, kind of a, a frosty looking thing, a light, you know, not a heavy plant, but it'll also trail over some, but uh, a neat companion. Of course, 
uh, alyssum is a, uh, a spring and early summer plant, uh, a neat fragrance and uh, compact. You can put this at the edge and it'll grow down the side. It'll provide some fragrance and uh, comes in uh, white, uh, purple. I think we probably also have some pink. Of course, uh, one of the claims to fame for petunias are colors. This is a super tunia, uh, more heat tolerant than the typical petunia, but uh, neat colors. There's another one, and that one, uh, nice names too, uh, Limoncello, and yeah, where's this guy? Phantom, neat colors. Here's another Super Tunia, uh, Daybreak Charm, and here's a little Lobelia. Uh, of course, there's a neat combination of colors. You can see why I'm a sucker for blue. It uh, really brings out other colors. Here's another plant that's uh, kind of a uh, in-between uh, Joseph's coat. There are several varieties. They're basically for foliage color. They will spill over a little bit, but they kind of fill and they uh, kind of up help to bring out other colors. You know, these are uh, some uh, dwarf lantana. And you can see that, you know, that really, the little purple kind of brings out the, the pink and yellow there. Uh, good companions because they uh, both of them will tolerate blazing heat. Of course, this one is, uh, you know, that's another uh, dwarf uh, lantana. These are kind of uh, uh, designer lantana. They don't get as big as the ones that you would have in your yard. That's why they're so neat for uh, uh, mixed containers because they're not going to crowd out the other plants. They're robust enough to hold their own and uh, they love the heat and, and will continuously flower through the summer and fall. But the uh, neat colors. are just some uh, regular petunias. I just brought them in because uh, the petunias claim to fame is color. You know, how cool. And let's see. Here's his neighbor. Uh, just neat varieties. There are a lot of uh, varieties of uh, Celosia, have uh, neat blooms, extremely heat tolerant, uh, different uh, shapes and sizes. We have some dwarfs that'll be not even six inches tall, and then some like this that'll get taller, bloom all through the summer. A neat uh, uh, different shape of flower and different texture. And then for, uh, you know, we're, uh, I'm not a horticultural snob. You know, some people may say, oh, Christina Spikes is so 80s. Well, hey, I still like them. It gives a different texture. They're tough plants. They can do shade or full sun. Uh, a neat little addition to a container. If you want something a little more,
variety you have here. Uh, red sensation, borderline, you know, same kind of a function. Really neat texture and color. You know, sets off uh, other colors. And we'll take uh, full sun all the way to light shade. Here's another plant that uh, if you are a horticultural snob uh, years ago, you might have said, oh, coleus. That's so, that's so my grandmother's plant. Well, uh, the uh, developers uh, or breeders of plants, they've come up with so many neat uh, colors. And uh, years and years ago, most of the coleus were kind of a, more a shade plant. Now, most of the coleus that you see uh, will uh, tolerate full sun. They can cope with shade, but they, they uh, will cope with our full sun, which is neat. And uh, so many uh, super colors. Uh, and, of course, some of them, you know, little flecks of green in that one. And uh, Kapow. I don't know. Oh, that's my alarm. Don't be alarmed by my alarm. <laughs> Let me turn it off. Uh, it's 11 o'clock. I've been known to go on, so I have to pace myself with an alarm. But uh, that's just that's just uh, uh, that's one of the horticultural terms I use. Uh, too cool. That one is just too cool. And for full sun, this is one that's uh, kind of the exception. It's uh, for shade or uh, part sun, but uh, just uh, uh, you can't make this stuff up. You know, the kind of orange to mauve center and just the little, little teeth are light green. So that one is just Of course, here's one that uh, uh, herbs get in on the act. Uh, this one is a tricolor sage, you know, the culinary sage. Uh, we've got the regular gray, uh, the big leaf gray. Uh, we've got the variegated with yellow. And of course, this is a tricolor. Uh, it's got uh, green, white, and a little bit of purple in it. And that will do full sun. It's evergreen. Uh, it's not going to overpower the other, so that would kind of be a, a filler. And speaking of shade, you know, here we have a common name for these is uh, coral bells. Their claim to fame is uh, their foliage. But they also have uh, neat little blooms. But uh, if they never bloom, uh, they're still uh, just tremendous plants. They're a perennial. They're uh, evergreen, which is neat. And they'll do uh, morning sun is fine. Midday and afternoon sun, once we get into the heat of summer, is too much. So they'll take some sun and be just fine. But they won't take uh, blazing heat. But they will be evergreen right through the winter. So that's neat. Try to track them down. Oh, here we go. That's another variety of coral bell or hoopera. How cool is that? I mean, I couldn't make this up. It's too cool. Now, here's another plant that uh, I use my horticultural term, too cool. 
Now this one uh, is uh, under the my horticultural term of just plain cool. You know, how about that? I mean, uh, I'm a sucker for what I would refer to as horticultural, not horticultural, architectural plants, which means they're big and bold. Their form is really distinct and uh, uh, grabs your attention. Uh, this guy is a, uh, a giant leopard plant. Uh, this is one without the without the uh, yellow spots, but uh, it will bloom uh, in the fall or winter, early winter. Uh, the the uh, it's a shade. Take a little bit of morning sun, but mainly a shade plant and uh, evergreen. Uh, and you could easily do it in a container. So uh, I I've got a different variety. Uh, in one of my front beds and uh, they put up a little uh, daisy yellow flower on uh, stems and mine bloomed a little before Christmas time this year and let's see I think they may say here uh, yeah zone seven we're zone eight so easily and reliably uh, cold hardy you don't have to worry about it Although if I had it in a container and the weather guy said it's going to be 10 degrees tonight, I'd probably do a little protection just to be safe. Or it probably wouldn't affect the survivability of it, but uh, it might hurt the appearance a little bit. kind of kicking plants around a little bit but no plants will be hurt during the taping of this but just inconvenienced maybe embarrassed but uh, I did mention uh, since we're uh, in April a bunch of our hot weather stuff has shown up now it might not be uh, showing all that it can do but uh, it's here and it's ready to go Hopefully tonight will be the last chilly night. I know this next week we're going to be in the 80s, so that'll really get these guys underway. Speaking of heat, uh, it's one of my old favorites, uh, Firebush. It's just beginning to bloom. It's got kind of, it'll have orangey red blooms. And also, when it uh, is in a lot of sun, the uh, foliage will actually turn kind of an orangey color. So, uh, neat plant. Uh, hummingbirds like it. And, of course, there's a bigger size of the blue days. It's a gallon size. And of course, here's a uh, kufia. Uh, the one we have typically had in the past is uh, a bat face. They love the heat. They'll get two or three feet tall. Uh, love the heat. Bloom all summer into the fall. Another neat uh, companion plant. This one's kind of a filler uh, by itself. It's no big deal, but uh, the uh, Mexican heather, a neat color of green, little leaves, and uh, lavender blooms. So it's a, uh, you know, a nice companion to uh, some of the others. You know, the lavender, neat with the blue. And we've just gotten in the. Uh, yellow shrimp plant just starting to bloom that's such a, a, a neat form of a flower and they uh, love the heat they don't have to have full sun in the hottest part of the summer if they get a little shade or a little break from the afternoon sun they'd appreciate it and then uh, uh, we've got two or three varieties of esperanza which uh, Technically, they're a 
tropical tree. Here they're a tender perennial that die back to the ground. Uh, this is a yellow variety and and this one's called sparklet which has got you know kind of yellow and orange. I put one of these in one of our containers on the south side last year and uh, it just as the summer went along and it got hotter and hotter it just looked grew more and bloomed more and looked better and better the whole summer on into the fall. That's another plant that just eats up the heat. There's the other coral bell I was looking for. Uh, another neat color. And then this is one that's, uh, they've been around for a few years now, the Angelonia. This is a white one. Original plants uh, come from a, uh, a toasty area of Mexico, so very heat tolerant. Uh, they're kind of, I think they kind of have the nickname of the summer snapdragon because they kind of resemble snapdragons. And uh, if it's 110 degrees, it's just fine with these guys. Uh, they just uh, keep going. And it's kind of a uh, one of the few plants that has that kind of flower form that will uh, perform through the summer. We have a white one here. We'll have a bunch of different colors uh, coming on. Of course, here's a uh, plant that the tag is nice. But uh, the plant's not doing a whole lot yet, and that's because he's waiting for it to get hot. Once it does, uh, sprays of uh, little orange-red flowers, uh, a real uh, kind of uh, ferny uh, texture. Uh, that's a neat addition to uh, any hot, hot sun container. When it get go gets going, it'll look really neat with uh, blue days. You want to have a little bit different uh, texture in the pot, uh, a little movement. Mexican feather grass will be fine in a container, and that's of course a, a dependable hardy perennial. And uh, full sun, uh, no problem, loves the heat. this one out before but I didn't talk about it. Uh, this is a dragon wing begonia, uh, a, a really premium begonia. These guys will get, uh, this is a red one, it also comes in pink. The red one uh, will handle a fair amount of sun and be okay but it'll do shade too. Uh, the pink one pretty much just shade, uh, can, can't take much sun but these guys will get you know two feet or more tall they have these uh, chains of red flowers uh, and uh, big long leaves. Uh, a premium plant, really showy. This one would be certainly in the, the category of uh, uh, thriller. It uh, keeps going, gets bigger, uh, very heat tolerant, performs all the way through the summer into the fall. Speaking of the hot weather guys, we just uh, received hibiscus, the tropical hibiscus, and those are uh, really perform. That one is uh, super color for that pot. Yellow was always uh, popular, very showy. So uh... 
uh, uh, for texture and something different. You know, this is uh, the uh, blue dark grass or juncus. It's uh, evergreen. You know, it will take uh, anywhere from uh, sun to light shade or shade actually. Speaking of shade, we'll go through a few of those. Impatience, it's cool, bunch of neat colors. Blooms all through the summer, end of the fall, and Uh, uh, polka dot plant, different colors. That does shade. Uh, holly fern, uh, perennial uh, fern, evergreen. It'll get like three by three. And for some of the shrubs, like uh, Akuba, full shade, uh, winter hardy, evergreen, uh, low water use uh, would make a, a a neat, you know, that's kind of a, a thriller for a shade container. Eleven fifteen, and so it goes. For some other uh, neat shade plants with a different form, the uh, cast iron plant. This one is one we've just had in the last couple years a uh, dwarf of course they're evergreen will take full sun you know these guys could even cope as a house plant they'll get by on low light and uh, you know cast iron plant they're tough uh, and then this one a little bit thinner leaf and it's got you know the kind of white or light yellow dots that one's uh, Milky Way uh, a neat addition to a, a shade container. Of course, uh, Lily of the Nile, kind of quintessential container plant. This one is a Peter Pan variety. They get by in a little pot and look great. And you can tell this one gets by in a little pot because he looks great, and the roots have just about gotten to the point of bursting this little pot, but he's uh, still happy, and uh, he's got buds just about to pop. Been around forever. And spillers come in all forms. You know, this one is the... Uh, uh, blue rug juniper and basically it only gets about five or six inches tall and goes sideways but if you put it in a pot you know it'll trail over the edge and you could have uh, uh, thrillers and uh, fillers above it and this one would just evergreen very sun and uh, heat and cold tolerant uh, and a different look you could do that one if you wanted to do something like a, uh, a thread leaf uh, Japanese maple, you know, they got uh, morning sun. This would be a neat little companion at the base of it going over the edge. And then, of course, here's a, uh, one of the great uh, thrillers, uh, purple leaf fountain grass. and. Uh, neat color, a neat form, and of course it will, you know, the, the little blooms, you know, they will come in uh, early to mid-summer, and this one, uh, it can be kind of robust, uh, you know, it can get three feet or more tall and wide, and if you count the blooms, uh, bigger than that, but a really neat look. Its only drawback is it's an annual. It won't survive the winter, but there's not much else that looks quite as neat as a uh, 
purple fountain grass in a great form with all of its blooms. some more hot weather guys. Of course these are the uh, uh, dwarf zinnias and this one is the uh, uh, profusion series. You know they'll only get about a foot tall but they go sideways uh, a bunch of different colors. Uh, we'll go all through the summer into the fall. Extremely heat tolerant and uh, very very showy. It will be a neat uh, kind of a in between a, a filler and a spiller. Here's a uh, cat mint, not cat nip, but cat mint. Uh, neat kind of a ground cover, uh, blooms through the summer. And of course, another uh, variety of uh, Super Bells, uh, Black Current Punch, looks neat together. And we've got here the uh, Blackfoot Daisy. I have no idea where they came up with that name, but uh, it's a, a great little perennial for full sun. It'll get a foot tall or so, maybe a little wider. Uh, bloom all through the summer into the fall probably be blooming at uh, Thanksgiving might be blooming at Christmas who knows but it's uh, surprisingly I think these are pretty much evergreen uh, tough little plant uh, which would uh, not going to crowd out its neighbors but uh, looks good and Texas rock rose it's another hot weather plant a neat color of pink and uh, just getting started we'll bloom all through the summer uh, into the fall and I was surprised last year uh, we had we had these out uh, in the nursery and uh, a hummingbird uh, came in and he was visiting the different flowers which I kind of expected him to hit the fire bush uh, he did the uh, flame acanthus I did the turks cap and he also did the rock rose, which I was kind of surprised, but uh, I, I couldn't disagree with him. If he likes rock rose, I'm going to have to go with what he wants. Of course, here we have uh, Suncredible Yellow uh, uh, Sunflower, obviously. That guy is going to do the heat, and it'll be something that that's a that's a uh, uh, thriller. He's going to have the height and the flowers. And here's uh, Angel Wings, Senecio, uh, and that's a perennial. It doesn't get much more bold. It doesn't get very tall, but uh, it doesn't have to. Uh, he's not going to be ignored, but that will set off all kinds of other colors. Uh, of course, you know, here's another one. Those guys, you know, uh, the uh, lambs here, it's a perennial. Uh, it's uh, the little kid's favorite. They all like to pet the lambs here. Uh, but it's a, a neat color and texture. Uh, goes well with other perennials. And, um, if you crush a leaf, it smells kind of like pineapple. Can't leave it without saying something about uh, palladiums. Been around forever, and there's a reason. Uh, neat colors will do shade or uh, ones like uh, this is a uh, red queen. Uh, well, they say Florida Cardinal looks like red or white queen. I'm sorry, but uh, 
pretty pretty sun tolerant, uh, but all of them will do shade and uh, uh, a neat uh, texture and uh, bowl foliage. So. that you could use for a, uh, a shade uh, container, or actually uh, I did, these are ajugas, this one with the itty bitty leaves, they came up with the perfect name, uh, chocolate chip, uh, and of course this time of year uh, they do the little blue blooms, which, uh, you know, the foliage is the main claim to fame. I think this one's uh, Catlin's Giant, a uh, much bigger leaf, similar color, but um, I planted one of these. Uh, these are evergreen perennial. Uh, I put this variety in a uh, mixed pot that uh, we put on the south side of the building, and it went through the winter. Of course, some things like this that are a little more shade oriented, uh, through the, that are winter hardy, uh, through the winter it'll do full sun. You know, late fall, winter, and spring, uh, this guy will do full sun. And it, uh, I planted it at the edge of the pot. It did a really neat job of, of uh, uh, growing over and hanging down the side of the pot. And I, I planted it there just because of the, the texture of the little leaves and the color. And I completely forgot about the fact that it was gonna bloom blue. And I walked by in, uh, I think it was late February, and uh, I noticed it had turned from this, this color to bright blue, the whole thing. It was just covered in uh, blooms. So um, kind of a, a, a neat uh, bonus. Of course, if you did that, once it gets to be, you know, uh, summer, you could move the pot from full sun to morning sun, and uh, this guy will really hang in there. That just about does it for everybody. In case somebody saw this one, this one is a uh, uh, macho fern. It's uh, not a winter hardy. Uh, it would be a container plant, but uh, uh, super bold look. Uh, really fills out a patio. Uh, not much else looks as, as uh, neat and bold as a uh, macho fern. And I think we've covered just about everybody. If you have any questions uh, let us know and uh, we'll have uh, this and more so uh, the season is really just getting started.